In this video, we're doing another starred problem, 3.2.17, that's going to live up to its billing as a starred problem that's definitely harder than the problems that we've been doing recently. We'll be finding the proportion of a payment for a loan that goes toward interest when we are given the proportion of the original balance that is still owed halfway through the payments. So a loan is being repaid with two end level payments starting one year after the loan is made. So these are this is going to be an annual annuity immediate. Just after the nth payment, the borrower finds that she still owes three-fourths of the original amount. The goal is to find what proportion of the next payment that goes toward interest. So it wasn't real clear to me how to do this. And so I did just start writing some things down. And sometimes that's the best problem-solving strategy. I, I went ahead and I made a number line. We've got two end payments, level payments, starting one year after the loan is made at time one. Call those level payments K, as we often do. And so again, it's, I, I did that. And then I, I, I wrote down some equations based on present values that thought, I thought, you know, maybe these will be helpful, maybe they won't be. And sometimes that's just what you have to do. It's I, th I thought this problem was not clear what to do right away. Uh, we could write down, for example, that the original loan amount, call it L, is the present value of all two end payments as an annuity immediate. I won't bother writing the I here. There is some interest rate, annual interest rate here going on. I wondered if it was useful to go ahead and use the formula for that present value, so I went ahead and wrote it down. What else could I say? I know at time n that the outstanding balance is 3 fourths of L. So I could write down a, a valuation at time n. 3 fourths L should be the present value at time n of the remaining, remaining payments. 3 fourths L should be k times a n, which you could write as k times 1 minus v to the n over i. Then I looked at these two equations and said, okay, hmm, if I divide one equation by the other, say the first by the second, I'm going to get some cancellation. The L's will cancel, the K's will cancel, the I's will cancel. I could write L over 3 fourths L equals, uh, let's see, this one, K times 1 minus V to the 2N over I over the other one k times 1 minus v to the n over i. And yeah, now a bunch of stuff cancels. The l's cancel, the k's cancel, the i's cancel. And I can rewrite 1 over 3 fourths as 4 thirds. I can say 4 thirds is 1 minus v to the 2n over 1 minus v to the n. And I've seen this kind of equation before, kind of a long time ago, and back in chapter 1. The top there is the difference of two squares. I can factor it as 1 minus v to the n times 1 plus v to the n and cancel with the 1 minus v to the n on the bottom as long as v to the n is not 1, which it would not be. To give me a simpler equation, to give me 4 thirds is 1 plus v to the n, which I can now solve for v to the n by subtracting 1. v to the n is 1 third. Now, is this helpful? It's not completely obvious. I think that it definitely is helpful, but you just keep trying and it turns out it is actually is helpful. What proportion of the next payment at time n plus 1 goes toward interest? Well, it would be the interest on the balance at time n, which is going to be 3 fourths L is the balance at time n, times i, the interest rate, divided by uh, the total payment, which is k, which I can use either one of these equations to solve for k. Doesn't matter either one. Let's uh, go ahead and use that equation to solve for k. I can write k as 3 fourths l i over 1 minus v to the n, right? Multiply both sides by i, divide both sides by 1 minus v to the n. Um, that's a way I can write what k is. I can bring that down here, 3 fourths l i over 1 minus v to the n, and lo and behold, we get more cancellation. Sorry about that. The 3 fourths LIs cancel. I'm left with 1 minus V to the N, 
1 minus 1 third, 2 thirds. And that is the answer. <clears throat> uh, 2 thirds of that payment at time n plus 1 go toward interest. That is the answer for this problem. So it was kind of tricky. Um, definitely, if you were trying to solve it for the first time, I, I did solve it eventually and was able to present it to you pretty quickly. But it would definitely take some experimentation, I think, uh, if you were solving this for the first time.